P.T. Barnum, I mean, former President Donald Trump's former lawyer, now turned legal spokesperson, Alina Haba, went on Fox News to purposely and pointedly violate the gag order issued by Judge Juan Mershon in Trump's criminal case not care. They went ahead and put salacious information that was frankly false. We know that from from words that were said prior to this trial. And now we're sitting here scratching our heads wondering where taxpayer dollars are in tree. And this case is not about defamation. It is not about a woman. It is about a record keeping category that was frankly correct, made in Trump Tower by the Trump Organization, somebody in accounting who did nothing wrong, who's never spoken to President Trump while President Trump was doing what? In the Oval Office running the country. Now, as is usual, what Haba says is just typical Fox blather. Yada, 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 taxpayers' money. Yada, yada, Trump didn't do it. And so on and so on. More important than what Haba said is the fact that she said anything. According to lawyers associated with this trial, the gag order applies not just to Trump, but extends to his legal team. Do we? Do you think that we're going to see a change in, in his behavior because he doesn't want to deal with this, because he doesn't want to risk going to jail? I don't know. I think that I think that the listen, the president is is trying to speak for himself and is frustrated because the gag order, I would have you remind remind the American people is not just for the president. It was for the president and anybody in his control campaign. Okay, now she may be a haba chul liar, but seriously, not even Alina Haba is dumb enough to define the gag order one day and then go out and unknowingly break it a couple of days later? No, really, I know it sounds strange to hear, but even Haba is not that stupid. True, she lost Trump his biggest civil case ever to the tune of over $450 million. So she's clearly not the brightest bulb in the batch. So then why has she been appointed to be spokesperson? Well, the answer to that question is simple. She demonstrated a willingness to be unethical. We're talking about a lawyer so unethical that when a Trump employee sued his Bedminster golf course for sexual harassment, Haba sidled up to her, pretending to be a friend who could advise her. That advice was to take such a horrible settlement that Haba then used it as an audition to get on Trump's legal team. And it worked. Haba became a Trump lawyer. Clearly, Haba is part of a broader plan to violate the gag order, and she did, directly attacking a witness, Stormy Daniels. What I will say is this, Sean. Uh, when you have inconsistencies with any witness, it speaks volumes. When you pick people that are not credible, it speaks volumes. This just in, breaking news. The AP is reporting and CBS is confirming the pot has called the kettle black. Now, we all know irony is dead in Trump world, but really, Alina Haba talking about credibility? That produces the kind of eye roll that can be physically dangerous. If Fox isn't careful, they could be sued again, this time for people's medical bills. And certainly the desperation of Team Trump is showing with this scattershot approach that Haba is taking. She's outraged about the tax money being spent. She's outraged over the quality of the case. And of course, she's outraged about Stormy Daniels. That's pretty standard fare since Fox is, after all, an acronym that stands for fake outrage to the Xth degree. But all this begs the question, what is the broader plan at work here? Why would Team Trump knowingly and willingly violate a gag order? People have been speculating for a while now that Trump actually wants to go to jail so that he can play the victim card and rally his base. But there are too many flaws with that plan. First of all, the base does not need to be rallied. He needs to win back white suburban women. And being jailed for not being able to control your behavior 
mm, does not quite exactly fit in with the worldview of the white suburban woman. Second, as Maggie Haberman from the New York Times has pointed out, Trump can't stand to be in the courtroom. He's certainly not going to like a jail cell better, especially because he's a germaphobe. It's far more likely that Team Trump is trying to orchestrate as much of a circus as they can to force a mistrial so that no verdict can be rendered before an election date. Trump's modus operandi all along has been delay, delay, delay. And while the presidency will not allow him to pardon himself for a state crime, if he can push the trial past the election and win a second term, he can then claim that a sitting president can't sit for trial, even a continuing trial. And that would be a slam dunk with this Supreme Court. You can almost hear the hand-wringing Alito decrying how the presidency must be protected, even if personal privacy does not. And that leads to a second possibility. Trump's team is trying to create so much havoc and cause so many rulings from Marchand that they can try and file an appeal with the Supreme Court even though this is a state charge and a state court. They need the slightest pretext to get it before Clarence Thomas, who could overrule it faster than he can deny he had a conversation about fake electors with his wife. And are we surprised that the orange clown is bringing the circus to town? Not in the least. But we can't let all the antics and the trial maneuvering get in the way of making sure Trump is soundly defeated at the ballot box in November. It's time for the elephants and the monkeys to get back in their cages where they belong. I'm Anthony Vincent Gallo for Occupy Democrats.